This is a production of Cornell University. So we, we're really fortunate, uh, Kyle and I and our students are fortunate to have a chance to um, get a second look at the floral behavior of Wisingi. Two and a half years ago, we had a chance to study around the clock for two and a half days its production of the stinky volatiles that give it, it, it its name and for which it's uh, justly known. So uh, during that time, there was a, a blog on the Cornell site and people from all over the world wrote in and asked, what are those strings? What are those wires? What are you people doing to our flower? <laughs> and, and, and we responded that we were actually collecting data from it. So we thought we'd take a few um, minutes to talk about what we're doing. All right, so when, when we stinky starts, when the spade begins to open and the show goes on, we're going to have a fishing line dangling from the groovers above the plant uh, to support this little battery-operated vacuum pump. It's a 9-volt battery-operated um, pump that will allow us to collect volatiles from the flower. What's really interesting about this is that usually we enclose a flower, they're always, always smaller than this, in what we call a headspace bag, uh, an oven bag, say that you would bake turkey in, that doesn't have volatiles of its own. We let the volatiles accumulate and then we collect them over a little trap like a cigarette filter, but much smaller. And so uh, what we have here is the, is the battery pump that we're going to put a little filter on and, and then hang it suspended into the floral chamber where a lot of the volatiles are being produced. And we're going to take snapshots every two hours of how the odors change as the plant, as the, as the, as the inflorescence mature. We're doing this in two different ways. This one is cumulative. Okay, the, battery, the pump is just going to run. It's going to collect volatiles over time. This little syringe here, we call it a solid phase microextraction fiber or SPINI. It has a little piece of, of essentially fishing line that also gets exposed in the chamber of the inflorescence and adsorbs the volatiles onto it. Then we can use chemical analysis to, um, to strip those volatiles off and separate them into their component peaks and we'll be posting those data on the, uh, on the Cornell site for everybody to see. And then what we're going to do as we're taking these chemical measurements, we're also going to be taking measurements of temperature and carbon dioxide. So we've noticed from previous research, and also um, two years ago when it was last, that um, there are rhythmic um, thermal blasts, and uh, we'll, we also want to measure um, possible carbon dioxide um, blasts. So what we have here is a digital temperature probe, and what we'll be doing is Sticking it into the tissue at various um, heights of the spadex um, to test the temperature over time. And we also have syringes that will be taking air samples from inside the chamber um, to calculate their CO2 concentration. Um, and we have our CO2 analyzer behind us, and we'll be injecting samples into that to test that concentration. Right, and so what reason for being interested in that? We know from the thermal imagery that these things really heat up just as they're producing um, the, the, the largest release of volatiles. But the, the insects that are attracted to these flowers um, experience all of that at once. The heat inside the chamber, the carbon dioxide as the plant is respiring like a sprinter, um, and these uh, very strong uh, information-rich volatiles that, that for the flies and the beetles that are attracted to this plant um, have a lot of meaning because um, they are simulating the, the, the cues that are from a rotting corpse. So we'll be doing that around the clock as the flower opens and as people come in and trying to surreptitiously sneak into the corner and collect our data and we'll be posting these data as we, as we collect them. This has been a production of Cornell University on the web at cornell.edu.